the theme behind Carnatic music is bhakti, devotion. It dates back to the Vedic age, and then by 14th, 15th century, the father of Carnatic music, Purandar Dasa, he started to shape the tradition, and he started to write the basic lessons, small songs, and it took a shape. And in 16th century, this trinities. Uh, came into picture, uh, Saint Tyagaraja, Shama Shastri and Swami Dikshita. And they used to compose mainly in the South Indian language, Telugu and Sanskrit. So uh, it's also ly lyric based. Um, now one of the major differences between the North Indian classical music and South Indian classical music is, North Indian is mostly improvisation, but in South Indian music there's a equal balance of both compositions and improvisation. See, when we say Indian music, North Indian classical music is more popular, the sitar, tabla. There is so much in South Indian Carnatic classical music, um, especially in this part of the world, Scotland. I feel that uh, it needs more exposure. Traditional Scottish tunes I have heard, some of the scales um, are identical to our ragas, Indian ragas. And it's very rhythmical. Um, violin is a Western instrument, European instrument, and it had to travel from the West to East and get adapted to Indian classical music in the late 18th century. As it is, the instrument is the same, but when we perform, the the position is different. Western violin is held like this, and the Indian violin is uh, we, we, we squat down and position the violin between the uh, collarbone and the ankle. This is to facilitate the easy playing of gamakas, which are nothing but gliss notes. And when you see in Indian classical music, we use lots of gliss notes, the gamakas, and that is the trump chord of Indian classical music. Example, now I have a scale like this. It's a simple major scale. Okay, now I'm going to play it in the Indian way. You could see the embellishments there.